Okay, so when I first got this product, I thought to myself, this better make me look like Adriana Lima. Otherwise, it won't be worth 30 bucks. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, I'm going to review the new La Roche-Posay Age Correct sunscreen. Today, I'm going to review the tinted version. And don't worry, in the next few weeks, I will also review the non-tinted version of the same sunscreen. So stay tuned for that. And make sure that you subscribe and maybe click the notification bell so you don't miss out that video. So I bought the tinted version first because Tinted sunscreens are trickier for use. They can make you look streaky. They can be hard to blend. You know, they can have no coverage at all. So yeah, pretty much tinted sunscreens can make you look like a mess. So because of that, I got the tinted version first. So I thought to myself, if I like the tinted version, then for sure I will like the non-tinted version as well. Okay, so as in every review, I will go through ingredients and claims, and I will also show you a demo application, how it acts on the skin. And I will even layer the sunscreen so that we can see properly how it layers because as you know it is really important for sunscreens to be layered in order to maintain the claimed protection that is stated on the packaging. Okay so first let's go through the main active ingredients and claims. So La Roche-Posay claims that this sunscreen is anti-aging and that it can reduce fine lines. It also improves the elasticity of the skin and the major claim is that it can fade dark spots. Now, if this can really do that, this will be the best seller all over the world. And of course, this product will protect you from both UVA and UVB rays and it is broad spectrum. And if you don't know what broad spectrum means, that means that the UVA protection in the product is at least one third of the claimed UVB protection. Protection. Okay, so here are the most important active ingredients that we have in this product. So we have low molecular hyaluronic acid, niacinamide, and phenyl resorcinol. Now, low molecular hyaluronic acid can actually reduce the appearance of fine lines because low molecular hyaluronic acid can penetrate deeper into the skin and reduce the appearance of wrinkles. But of course, it's not going to be long term. It's going to last only until that hyaluronic acid is degraded. But nonetheless, it is going to really reduce the appearance of fine lines. Now, the good thing is that it has the low molecular hyaluronic acid. If it had high molecular hyaluronic acid, now that one would just sit on the outermost layers of the skin and would just hydrate the skin. So that one would not be effective in reducing the fine lines. And this low molecular hyaluronic acid can actually reduce the fine lines. So that's great. Moving on, then we have niacinamide. Now niacinamide is a superstar around here in skincare. Niacinamide can boost the collagen production. It is an anti-aging ingredient and it also repairs the skin barrier. And it's also used in fading dark spots. It can brighten the skin and fade dark spots. And it is an ingredient that is also used in treating acne. So it's a great ingredient overall to have in this product. So we definitely have something that will fade the dark spots. So that claim is backed up by this ingredient. And and then the star of the show, the real star of the show here is phenyl resorcinol. Now this ingredient can fade the dark spots and it has the same mechanism as tamidol. Tamidol is also a resorcinol compound, but it's a different compound. I will, yeah, I will put this is tamidol and we have here phenyl resorcinol. Now they have the same mechanism of action. And if you don't know already, I tested tamidol because the amidol is the active ingredient in anti-pigment serum by Eucerin. And that one is really effective in fading dark spots. I do have a whole playlist. I will put it right here. Yeah, this is another compound. This is another resorcinol that has the same mechanism of action and can actually reduce dark spots. But there's one catch. Antipigment serum by Eucerin can be used up to four times a day. There is a limit on how many times you can apply it to your skin. Now on this one, on the other hand, there is no restrictions on the packaging. There is no limitations on how many times a day you should apply it. So so that tells me that the concentration of this ingredient is not that high because they had to make this product safe for reapplication because you know you have to reapply sunscreen you know that tells me that maybe the concentration is not that high and it might not be enough to reduce the dark spots but i will try to test that on my mom because my mom has a lot of dark spots so i will get back to you on that when i test the product for a couple of weeks i guess we will have to compare the before and after photos to see if it really can fade the dark spots. But yeah, based on the ingredients, yeah, it does have the ingredients that can fade the dark spots. So definitely the claims are backed up by ingredients. 
Okay, now let's check out the UV filters. Okay, so this sunscreen gives you a broad spectrum protection and an SPF of 50. It does have five UV filters and the first one is octacrylin. This one protects you in the UVA and UVB range, but it's not that strong on its own. So this one is more so here to stabilize other photo unstable UV filters. And that brings me to the next UV filter here and that is avobenzin. Avobenzin provides you the proper UVA protection, but it's not photo stable. So Octocrylin is going to stabilize avobenzin, so that is great. The next filter that we have in here is ethyl hexyl triazone. Now, this is a great photo stable UVB filter. And then the next two stars of the show here are Mixoral SX and Mixoral XL. Now, these are the L'Oreal Group exclusive sunscreen agents. Mixoral SX protects in the UVA range, and Mixoral XL protects in the both UVB and UVA range and is highly photo stable. Now, these were also included in the Shaka Fluid and in the Invisible Spray, and I do have reviews on those sunscreens as well. Well, so you can watch them here if you want, but overall, these are some great chemical UV filters. Okay, so I guess the ingredients are great, but let's see how it acts on the skin. Okay, so I'm starting off with a bare face, uh, but I already protected the under eye area here because this sunscreen should not be applied around the eyes. So I already applied the Shaka Fluid around the eye area because that one is really gentle around the eyes. So I use that one as my under eye uh, sun protection and I also have a review on that one. You can check it out on my channel. And yeah, even though I did protect the under eye area, I'm still trying to avoid it while I'm blending it. And as you can see, I'm actually putting in a lot of time and a lot of effort to blend this properly and I'm, I'm kind of struggling it is really hard to blend it without having streaks on your face so I will now show you a close-up shot just so you can see what I'm dealing with yeah so it, 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 the, the texture of the sunscreen is quite thick and greasy but it leaves streaks so I find it best if I just tap it with my fingers instead of you know trying to spread it but sometimes even tapping isn't working so it's really a struggle blending out this sunscreen is a struggle as you can see I'm having a really hard time here here's another close-up this is my forehead it's overly texturized so this sunscreen also gives you a lot of texture on your skin so yeah so I'm going to speed up the process just so I don't waste your time here um yeah you get the point it takes a lot of time and effort to blend it properly and even then it is not blended properly Okay, so this is the best that I've got. I cannot blend it better than this. This is all that I can offer you. And here I'm applying a concealer. This is the Bourjois Healthy Mix. And I chose this concealer because this one has a yellow undertone. And I thought that it would match the sunscreen well because as you can see, this sunscreen is giving me a yellow tint, a really strong yellow tint. And you can see that properly when my hand is in the frame because I do have a neutral undertone. So yeah, you can tell that the color is not the best match but here is how everything looks in the end after I blended everything I actually like the finish it is giving me a nice finish but yeah it did take a lot of time and effort to get to this place but yeah I, I must say that it does look nice and dewy and after this I waited for 15 minutes and then I applied another layer on top and by the way, this is how it's looking after 15 minutes. So as you can see from far away, it's looking very decent, dewy. I don't know, I, I'm liking it so far. But when I do a close-up shot, you know, when I zoom in, you can see that it is still patchy looking, overly texturized. So yeah, anyways, let's apply a second layer. This is a second layer now. The struggles with blending are the same, if not worse. It does give me more coverage after I do two layers, but here is what happens when I do an extreme close-up. Here's what happens, you know, it's streaky and even tapping isn't working because it removes the product. I have no idea how to blend this layer on top. It's really difficult. And here I had another problem here around the eye area because yeah, it's just here the, the, the tapping didn't work, but I eventually I made it work somehow. And here's how it's looking after a second layer. Yeah, second layer definitely gives you more coverage, but you will have even harder time to blend it on your face. So yeah. Now, because it does leave you with a sticky finish, you will have to set this 
this and I used the RCMA no color setting powder and I first started with my neck because my hair keeps getting stuck to my neck because of how sticky the finish is so yeah I ended up setting everything uh, with this RCMA no color setting powder and here I just did another close-up just to show you that everything is not as perfect as it looks when it's from far away but yeah you get the point yeah here I'm just contemplating the 30 bucks that I spent on this product and moving on with makeup I did finish up my makeup because of course I had to film and let's just say that this isn't the best makeup base because as you can see I'm very sad here that I cannot blend the bronzer but I made it work somehow and I finished up my makeup somehow and it ended up looking decent in the end. And here is the final look. This is the best that I could do this day and I think it ended up looking pretty good being uh, that I had a lot of difficulties with this sunscreen as a makeup base. So yeah. And let me give you another close-up shot just before I share my final opinion. This is how it looks up close. So be your own judge and let me know, do you think this is worth 30 bucks or not? Okay, now let me give you my final verdict on this product. So I must admit I have mixed feelings. Here's the thing, if I was a cosmetic formulator, I would be like, yeah, we're targeting four issues with this. Fading dark spots, it's anti-aging, it gives you coverage, and it gives you a broad spectrum sun protection. Like, yeah, this is going to be a bestseller for sure. But as a customer, do I really love it that much? Is it really practical? Maybe not. But of course, as every product, it does have pros and cons. Maybe a little bit more cons for me. But of course, let me first go through both. Okay, so I have two pros. First pro would be that it does really have good ingredients. Niacinamides, low molecular hyaluronic acid, phenylethyl resource and all. And it has great UV filters, gives you a broad spectrum sun protection. So yeah, it does have good ingredients. I must admit that it does have good ingredients. Another pro would maybe be that I must admit it does give me a really low lovely natural glowy skin and even skin tone I, I must admit but it takes a lot of time to blend it and of course it looks good just from far away when you come close it looks patchy and yeah but I'm getting into the cons never mind <laughs> So those are the pros. It does have good ingredients and from far away, my skin does look kind of cute. There you go, I must admit. But then there are cons. Okay, con number one is that you need a lot of time to blend it properly. And chances are that you will be more focused on blending it properly than you are going to be focused on applying enough. So you know that two, two finger rule for applying enough sunscreen? Forget about that. You won't be able to blend that amount of this sunscreen on your face without it looking patchy and streaky and crazy all over your face. So chances are that you're going to under apply the sunscreen and lose the claimed protection. So that's a huge con for me. Okay, now the next con is that even though I did say that from far away, my skin looks kind of cute and it gives me a nice little glow. And yes, I must admit that can be considered a pro, but as I said already, you know it takes a lot of time to blend it to make it look like that and then it takes a lot of effort to preserve it looking like that throughout the day because unfortunately it's not very long lasting and as soon as you touch your face accidentally you will remove a part of it and you know it will just look patchy and uh, not very pretty so to be honest I would rather just apply a regular sunscreen and then a foundation on top gives me more even coverage so and then the third con I already mentioned as well, and that is that because this does not have a limit to how many times a day you can apply it, it makes me think that the concentration of phenylethyl resorcinol is not high enough to provide you with the results of fading dark spots. You know, it, it makes me skeptical because of that. But yeah, as I said already, I will test the non-tinted version on my mom because she does have dark spots and I will do the before and after pics so then we can see if this actually works or not. So stay tuned for that video so yeah that would be my final verdict on this product unfortunately i won't be buying it again and it just didn't work out for me and hopefully the non-tinted version will work out better for me yeah fingers crossed for that and yeah thank you so much for watching and i will see you in my next video bye